Hey, what's up? For this video, we're gonna do some cool things with face tracking, namely this zoom in and rotation effect that you see going on. So let's just jump right into it, shall we? All right, I'm gonna try and get through this as quick as possible. The first thing we need to do is create a jit.world and we need to say at floating one so that we have a nice floating window that we can do stuff in and it's right there. And all we gotta do after we make that object is create a toggle and attach it in lock our patch and turn it on so it starts rendering. We've got this light gray color right now, so that's how we know it's rendering. And right after we do that, we're gonna create a jit.gl video plane so we can display video in our window. We're gonna say at transform reset to, um, so that way it stretches to the border of the window. And now we've got a video plane, so all we gotta do is send some uh, webcam information into it. I'm gonna say at unique one. Um, this pass this stops it from passing duplicate filters through so we're gonna get a little bit better processing power Later on with the technique we're gonna do so it's a uh, very helpful to start this way um, We're gonna create a message that says open attach it into our jit dot grab lock our patch click it and bam There I am in the webcam and we can see that now in our window um, If you have a little bit of max skills you may be questioning right now why this is working already We're not sending a bang to our jit dot grab object uh, well, a nice feature about doing stuff with OpenGL is that if you have like a jit.grab or a jit.movie, it automatically knows to output frames without needing a bang if it's attached to a jit.gl video plane object and you're doing stuff in OpenGL. Super unique feature uh, with GL that makes doing stuff a little bit more efficient, so that's nice. Um, the other thing I'm going to do real quick is throw in a jit.gl. Dim map and we're going to say at vert one so it flips on the horizontal axis and that way we're going to have like a more natural mirrored appearance. Now when I raise my right hand, it shows up in the right window on the right side of the window. So that's like super helpful. Cool. So now that we've got our webcam in and we're ready to go on that front, we need to start doing the face tracking stuff. And um, I should have said this first, but what we need to do is click on the package manager, which is going to pull open this window um, pretty quickly usually and uh, there's a package called cv.jit and you got to click and install this if you don't have it installed already um, there'll be a little install button here mine says uninstall because I have it installed um, once you go ahead and s install that save the patch as it is right now quit out of max and reopen it and then you're good to use the CV objects in max MSP um, which is how we're going to do the face tracking stuff there's this one object called cv.jit.faces and it tracks faces. Um, if we open up the help file for real quick, uh, super useful documentation, we can see that there are some necessary things we have to do in order to get the face tracking thing to work. The first thing we got to note is that uh, there's this jit.rgb to luma object because it only works in grayscale data. We got to take our four plane color matrix and convert it down to a one plane grayscale matrix so that it can do face tracking optimally. The other thing you might notice is that their jit.grab dimensions are 80 by 60 pixels. We have to downsample our camera frame so that uh, it can still do face tracking but doesn't use a lot of processing power to like analyze every pixel. If you downsample it, you get better tracking results uh, and more efficient computer power. So that's like super helpful. Um, we're not going to downsample to 80 by 60 though. Uh, we're going to do something else. Instead, we're going to create a jit.matrix and say 4char, and we're going to do 240 by 160 as our downsampled version. Um, and this is a super helpful uh, technique with jit.matrixes, in case you didn't know about it. Um, you can use them to downsample just by changing the dimensions. And if we plug that into our video plane real quick, you'll see. Uh, it's a little bit more pixelated now. It's not like terrible quality, but it's definitely not high quality. Um, this will work perfectly though for doing the face tracking stuff. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put our full rendered or full HD version in here. Uh, and just a thing to note, um, the jit.grab, the webcam that I'm using is 1280 by 720. So that's a standard high def image. Um, and we're going to be able to do uh, cool processing stuff on the high def image and not the downsampled version. So that's uh, really neat. Uh, next step is we got to create the RGB to Luma object. So we convert our four plane matrix down to our grayscale. And then we just pop that right in there and we're doing face tracking stuff just like that. It's super simple. 
Uh, but you can't see it. You don't know that it's actually tracking my face right now. That's what this other CV object is for. CV.jit.faces.draw. It's a subpatch object they've made uh, to show the bounding boxes of our face tracking. So if you just patch the CV.jit.faces object into the left inlet, and then you take the down sample matrix and put it in the right inlet, which is the raw camera feed, it's going to show a bounding box around uh, my face wherever it detects my face, which is super useful uh, to know that it's working and that we've got like some clear face tracking going on. Um, we're, this is just a helpful visual um, in our case though. What we need to do is actually figure out the coordinate points of this box that it thinks we're in. Uh, and to do that, we're going to use the jit.iter object and we're gonna attach our cv.jit.faces object to that and if you uh, output the left outlet to a message real quick you can see that we get four values these are the coordinate points of this bounding box in this window the first two values are the top left corner and the next two the last two are the bottom right and from those coordinate points it knows how to draw this box around my face in the sub patch um, cool so we can do some really cool processing techniques like zooming in when it detects a face and rotating it around like you saw at the beginning um, based on knowing these coordinate points. We're going to use the object jit.rota and we're gonna patch our uh, regular webcam feed, our high def webcam feed through that object. And we're going to use these coordinate points to uh, determine the anchor points for jit.rota. Um, the anchor points of the jit.rota object is where it does all of its 2D transformation effects around. So uh, if, we, if we like zoom in, it's going to zoom in on where you specify your anchor points. And we want our anchor points to be the very center of this box. Um, so we have to take these coordinate values and we have to do some fancy math stuff to get to the center of the box. Um, real easy though, it's not too complicated. First step is to unpack uh, our coordinate points, and I'm gonna delete this message. Um, and then we're going to reverse subtract. So rather than subtracting the left inlet from the right inlet, we're gonna subtract the right from the left, and we're gonna take the first and the third outlet of our unpack object, and the second and the fourth. And we're gonna do it twice, and then when we patch that into an integer box, we're going to get the radius of this box because we're taking the edges and we're subtracting the distance between them uh, on the X and the Y axis. So it's giving us a value that is the distance between these boxes. Uh, that's the first step to getting to the center. Um, so we have like the, 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 the diameter of the box, um, but if we want to get to the center, we need half of that value. So super easy, you can either divide by two or more, multiply by 0.5 um, this value. And I'm gonna do that twice for each, um, even though they're the same value because the box is equal, so it's just the diameter is the same on both sides. Um, this is just really to emphasize the example of the X and Y axis though. Uh, and now we have half that value, so we have half that distance. We're right here, this is the value that uh, this number is equal to. And then we need to add it back to the original for the X axis. So I'm gonna take that first outlet and I'm gonna take this value and add it. And now this number is going to be the center point uh, on our X axis. It's what we're, it, so we are now at the center on our X axis with this value. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the Y, except the Y axis works reverse. It's, it's top to bottom. So rather than adding, we're going to subtract. And I'm gonna take the last uh, Y value and, add, and subtract the radius. And now we have our anchor point for the Y axis. So all we have to do is put that into our jit.rota object as the defined anchor point. So I'm gonna attach the jit.rota back into the video plane and we don't need our cv.jit.draw faces anymore because we don't really need to look at the bounding box at this point. So I'm gonna delete that too. And then we're gonna press the A button to create two adder UI objects. 
uh, and patch those into the JIT.roto object. In case you don't know what this is, it lets you see the parameters of the object that it's attached to, um, which is a very useful feature. Um, and I'm gonna select anchor X and anchor Y because these are the parameters we wanna change. And we're gonna patch our first value in for our X axis and the second value in for the Y axis. And now, no matter where my face is, that center of that box is, going, is our anchor points. Um, so then when we start to do effects with this JIT.roto object, it's going to always be centered on our face. So I'm gonna create two more adder UI objects just to mess with two more parameters. Um, and I think we're going to do the zoom effect first. So I'm gonna select zoom X and zoom Y, and I'm gonna create a float number box to attach into both of these adder UI objects so we can change the value at the same time. And as I increase this, uh, it starts to zoom in, but you see it's not actually zooming in on my face. And that's because we haven't done one very key step yet. The face detection has been working around this down sample matrix. So that's the pixel range value that these numbers are coming out for. However, because we're doing the JIT.rota stuff to our original full HD image, um, the numbers just don't line up. So real simple fix for that. We just gotta move some stuff down real quick and we gotta scale these values from zero to 240 to zero to 128 for our X axis. And the same thing for our Y. We're gonna take it, uh, hold on, <laughs> zero to 240, zero to 128 and then we're gonna create another scale and we're gonna say zero 160 uh, to 720 so that this down sample matrix range will match our uh, HD pixel range. Um, and cool, we just pop that right in between this object and this object. And now when I increase this, you'll see it is zooming in on my face. Hello, wow, that is close. <laughs> so cool, I like that value. I like it being that close. I'm going to create a message that says three, um, just round down a little bit and a message that says one. And I only want this to zoom in on my face when it actually sees my face. Um, so if we patch both of these in to this box and then we send the message get n faces um, into our cv.jit.faces object, it's going to let us know how many faces it is detecting out of this dump out outlet. In case you don't know about this, uh, it took me a long time to figure it out. Anytime you send a git message to an object, whether it's like git n faces or git state, it's going to dump that information through the dump out outlet. So we can say route n faces, attach the dump out outlet to that object, and then attach this to an integer box. And then all we have to do is just send this a bang. And the JIT.world object actually has this middle outlet uh, that sends out a bang every time it renders a new frame. So it's really good to use that to do, uh, to send bangs to stuff because then it's going to keep up with like your frame rate and everything. And you see now that as I attach this outlet to send this get end faces a bang message, uh, we have this, this number changed to a one because it sees one face. If I cover my face, it's gonna be zero because it can't see my face anymore. Um, Cool. So anytime it sees a face, we're going to say greater than or equal to one in case, you know, there's more than one face. Uh, we're going to have, oops, attach it to the left inlet, not the right. Um, we're going to say if it sees a face, send a bang to our message with the number three in it so that it zooms in and bam, it zoomed in because it sees my face. And if I cover my face now, it's going to zoom out. Bam, 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 bam. Cool. So that's one fun technique. Um, but we can keep adding stuff to this. Honestly, the uh, possibilities are quite endless. Um, so I'm going to create another adder UI object uh, over here, and I'm gonna attach it into our JIT.rota, and I'm going to select theta, because theta is what does rotation uh, for the JIT.rota object. And I'm gonna show you a super cool technique that I use all the time uh, to create ramps. So we're just gonna get a constant rotation going. If you use a phaser object, and you give it a value, something, honestly, sometimes it can be quite small. I'm gonna do 0 .003, which is a very small, small number. Uh, and we attach it to a peak amp object so that uh, it converts the signal into a numerical value. And we attach that to a float object. 
you're gonna see that it's slowly going to ramp up from zero to one over and over. It's going really slow because uh, I set that value super low. I'm gonna increase it to one just real quick so you can see, okay, it's going from zero to one super fast now. I'm gonna delete this and delete this and uh, bring it back just so it resets back to zero, zero, three. And we get our super slow ramp, which I'm then going to use a scale object and scale zero to one to be zero to 360 for like full rotation. Um, patch that into our float number box and then patch that into our theta and now it's rotating and uh, anytime it sees my face it's gonna zoom in and rotate on it just like that and if I do this uh, we're gonna we're gonna keep rotating and uh, you notice that the it's like rotating around the anchor now uh, and that's because it when it doesn't detect my face, these anchor points go to zero, so it starts to rotate around that corner. So we just need to do uh, some real quick smoothing of this data. Not too hard. We're just going to throw a gate in between our peak amp object and our float number box. So that way uh, we can close the passing of these values when it doesn't see a face. Um, so if it does see a face, this toggle is going to light up um, and let the information through. And if it doesn't see a face, it's going to stop and not let the information through. And then we just need it to reset back to zero instead of being stuck at whatever theta angle it's at. Um, not hard to do either. We're just going to say if it is zero, send a bang to this message zero. So it outputs that into this float number box pass bypassing that gate. And now we're back to normal when I cover my face, but then I uncover my face and it zooms in and it rotates. Uh, and there you have it. There is our fun face tracking feature and wherever I move my face, it doesn't matter. It's still going to rotate around my face. Um, so this is super fun and easy to build and fun to play with. And now you know some face tracking techniques in Max MSP and maybe you learn some other stuff about like JIT.roto or Git messages and how that works with the dump out outlet. I hope this video was super helpful for you. I tried to go fast, but explain things pretty clearly. If you have any questions or uh, anything you think needs further clarification, please leave that in the comments down below. But uh, otherwise, uh, that's it for this video and I'll see you next time. Thanks.